David here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with another fountain pen review. Now, over the years, I have generally shied away from reviewing what I will categorize as lesser expensive Chinese-made pens. I know that there are a large number of folks who care for them, but in the words of Mike Madison, I, it just wasn't my jam. Um, I will admit, however, that the last few pens I, would re I have reviewed from this category, mainly from Asvine, um, have indeed impressed me in regard to their quality and performance, so I might be coming around a little to them. Now, the pen I have for you today is from Hongdian. A few months back, I reviewed their Qin Dynasty offering, but today I have a different pen of theirs, which is the A9. What I am going to do today is go over the parts and features of this intriguing offering, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for about it. I'll show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. Thanks go out to the good folks at Hongdian for providing two pens for review, one of which will be given away. Now, I will tell you up front, this won't be a standard giveaway. Uh, at the upcoming DC Pen Show, on the Saturday of the show at noon, I will be giving a seminar slash Q&A. Uh, and I was going to bring along a number of items to give away. And for the folks that ask questions, uh, then they could choose from those items. So one of these pens will be added to those giveaway items. The seminar at last year's show was a lot of fun, and I'm looking forward to hanging out with folks again. Uh, in regard to the pen at hand, it comes in this small metal tin. Uh, the pen comes in three different colors. There is a green, brown, and blue. Uh, and then inside the tin, there is no documentation or anything, but just the pen. Uh, and I have two colors of these. Uh, I have the blue as well as the brown. Uh, for this portion of the review, uh, let's just focus on the blue model. Uh, the pens are made from a metal and have a distinctive spiraling emoir pattern on the cap and the barrel. Uh, here's a closer look at that patterning on the blue model. Uh, this patterning is actually laser engraved. Uh, here's a microscope shot of what that looks like. You can see that it's essentially a bunch of dimples, but uh, the exterior is fairly smooth. You can see that there are straight lines on either side of this pen, extending across both the cap and the barrel. Um, I will say I could do without those lines. It would be a little bit nicer if that was just a continuous pattern. Um, the cap does have triple entry points, so if you just casually capping this pen, there's a two out of three chance that once you actually uh, cap the pen that these lines will not line up. Um, in cases like this, if you are particular about those kinds of things, you'll need to remember the alignment uh, of the lines and where they need to be in order to uh, make sure that you have a perfect final alignment. Uh, for this pen, you need to remember that you insert the nib facing down. Uh, if you face it directly down uh, and then insert it and then cap the pen, then the lines will match. While in the grand scheme of things, this is not a major issue, uh, I still wish that I didn't need to pay attention to that each time I capped the pen. Okay, let's take a look at the cl uh, closer look at the parts and features of this pen. Uh, the trim on this pen is a gunmetal in color, which I think matches the treatment nicely. On the top of the cap, it is flat and has a nice looking logo containing a winged creature, the company name, as well as the model name. On the side of the finial, again, it is stamped with the company name. Uh, this transitions into the clip, which is a bit on the firm side, but it's still appropriately functional in materials of varying thicknesses. Um, the cap is straight until you get to the end, where there is a thin angled band which creates a small step down from the cap to the barrel. The barrel is straight until you reach the very end where there's a minimal taper, and the end of the barrel is flat. Uh, this cap twists off with just over a single rotation, and underneath is one of the surprises of this pen, which is this number 8 stainless steel nib. Uh, this nib is only available in fine and extra fine. Um, I'll talk about it more during the writing sample, but I would categorize these nibs as decent, especially at the price point of this pen. Um, and another pleasant surprise is that this nib also comes with an ebonite feed. 
The section is resin and begins with a slight flare before angling up until you reach the cap threads and a very small step up to the remainder of the barrel. Uh, this pen has a decent weight to it. For a metal pen, it's not overly heavy and it's plenty long enough to use unposted. The cap does post and it does post securely and it doesn't add an inordinate amount of length or weight to the pen. So if you like to post your pens, this one should work well for you. Um, I also like how the angled cap band makes for a smoother transition as it makes contact with your palm. Uh, this is a cartridge converter pen. It accepts standard international cartridges and a converter is provided. Uh, with the metal in this housing as well as the barrel, um, eye dropping this pen would not be recommended. The Hongdian A9 can be found on Amazon and sells for $25.99, which is certainly well within the starter pen price range. I'll put a link to the Amazon listing in the notes below. Uh, it's an intriguing offering. Um, I do care for this exterior twisting moir pattern, which is eye-catching. Um, I do like the size of the number eight nib and the inclusion of the ebonite feed is nice as well. Um, it only being offered in a fine and extra fine is a detriment for me personally, since fine and extra fine are my two least favorite tipping sizes. Uh, but there are lots of folks out there who love fines and extra fines nibs. Uh, and for the price, as you will see in the writing sample, the nibs perform well. I wouldn't say they're spectacular or glorious, but they're decent, which is what you would expect from a $25 pen. Uh, okay, don't forget that I will be giving away this brown model away at the upcoming DC show seminar. I look forward to hanging out with lots of pen folks that weekend. Uh, now it is time for some measurements, size comparisons, and a writing sample. So here we have the Hongdian A9. Uh, let's give you another look at that blue. I do like that twisting design. I just think that that's a, a unique application. And then also wanted to give you a look at the brown, uh, which like I said, will be the one that will be given away at the seminar in DC. So in regard to some size comparisons, uh, we do have a couple of pens from Asvine. Uh, this was the P36, uh, and then this one was the uh, V126. Uh, and then I had mentioned it, I had previously reviewed a pen from Hongdian, which was the Chen Dynasty, which isn't the most subtle pen, but for the price, it's very interesting in the way it looks. And if I recall, it performed nicely as well. In regard to some other pens, here it is with a Lamy All-Star and a uh, Pilot Metropolitan. And then finally, here it is with a Twisby Eco. In regard to some uncapped comparisons, here it is with that uh, Lamy All-Star, and here it is with the Twisby Eco, and then finally here it is with that Asvine V126. Before we did the writing sample, I wanted to give you another look at that number eight nib. I just think it's a nice size nib for this pen, and was just a little bit surprising, but it adds to the looks of it. So, in regard to the writing sample, we have the Hongdian. And this is the A9. Uh, and this one is a fine stainless steel nib. And the ink that I'm using here is from Robert Oster. And this was an ink that I believe is exclusively available through Galen pens, which is the Admiral Blue. This is what the ink looks like. It's a decently shading kind of saturated blue. Uh, this is what it looks like in comparison to Robert Oster's Carolina Blue, which is available through the Carolina Pen Company. Uh, and then here it is with Fountain Pen Revolution Royal Flush Blue. 
This is what the Robert Oster bottles look like. They're very tall. Uh, I have uh, yet to spill one, but I'm always just a little concerned that uh, they're going to tip over. I think there's probably something you can do in order to secure this base, but uh, the inks that Robert Oster makes are very, very nice. And here we go with the rest of the writing sample. Um, it seems like the more I write with this nib, I kind of break it in a little bit more and the more pleasant it gets. Um, it is a fine. You're not going to, you can get a bit of line variation out of here. Um, there is a bit of feedback to it. I'd say the ink flow is decent in regard to reverse writing. You know what? I did get a piece in there. There we go. Get rid of that. It actually worked well in reverse writing. And then in regard to some fast writing. Well, it had a skip there. I'm not sure if that's because of what I got caught in there earlier, but I hadn't experienced issues with this in my other testing. Now, also just to show this one, uh, this blue one has an extra fine nib. So uh, the extra fine, You can just see what it looks like in comparison to the standard fine. So here you have the Hongdian A9. I think for the $25.99 price point here, uh, that it's a decent offering uh, and there's a, a lot to like about it. So if you are looking for an entry level pen or if you like living around that entry level space, uh, then this is certainly something you'll want to take a closer look at. Until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.